，等等啊，誒、呃，我哋等等<笑> ，radio 喺前面開始啊，你誒、呃、等啦，嗰邊越完，我哋就等得瞓多。咁我哋而家叫做 live 咗先，嗱，咁所以而家我哋聽到係我哋嘅。好啊，睇到我哋嘅 ，OK。係啊，<笑>我哋可以開始啊。哦，直情而家講嘢啦，係未講嘢先 ，OK，OK。Okay. Okay. 我哋好相似，同时我哋又唔一样。我哋要学习，同时要认清方向。我哋要融入，同时要抽身观察。我哋要同城市同步。同时要有自己嘅思想，我哋要学识谦卑，同时要勇于想象。都会就系我同你嘅乐章，要成为更好嘅自己，成就更美好嘅都会。都会与我无限可能，香港都会大学。曾经你带我走遍童年，最好嘅总系俾咗我先。今日我想带翻你睇我嘅世界，最靓嘅风景，最高嘅山，最好都系有你喺我身边，帮我打点一切。我先明白，原来你俾我嘅温暖，从来唔简单。鸡仔乜最好的给家人。Now let's welcome back from day one, Dr. Gordon Chu. As you know, Dr. Chu is the founder of the Dr. Wholesome Academy, and he's here today to share with us his thoughts in terms of positioning in a world of technological change, artificial intelligence, and humanity. So, with that, let's welcome Dr. Gordon Chu to the stage. Dr. Chu, the stage is yours. Thank you, Perry Lam. This is absolutely wonderful. I am glad that today, out of Sapm Saplok, right, fifteenth and sixteenth. Today is Saplok, right, which is the sixteenth day. So we actually don't need to actually be on the on the fence of something. What's interesting about the timing of things? Sometimes you can't control the timing. Is that Aaron Pang, who interviewed me and released episode twenty five about go crazy, right? Go crazy. And let go of your ego equals finding happiness. 
And he released episode 26, actually, about AI. So you can just listen to that, and I don't have to give my talk right now. I could be done. So what I had to do was to make it interesting, because if I repeat the same talk, that would be kind of boring. So I figured I would give you guys the inside secret of how I realized that in the 21st century, that's where we are now, in addition to the climate change and things like that we talked about yesterday, is there's a the coming of another age, an age that will provide incredible solutions, scary, because it could also take a lot of old jobs away, but it has the ability to give us something better than tarot cards, which are top law pie, and better than going to a fortune teller, Wong Dai Xin, right? Better than doing that. What it can do is give you more accuracy, greater accuracy in knowing what the future beholds, such as this person is, are they right for me? Well, they might be right for someone else, but if they're not right for me, I rather not. I rather rather not, right? And how can I know what's right for me? Know thyself. Well, AI has the potential. So this is the 21st century guide. In a time of uncertainty and change, it's not inventing happiness like my TED Talk, it's inventing your happiness. And for those who know my past with Hong Kong, almost 20 years, probably more than that, when I first started with RTHK and talked about beauty and health, right? San Guang Da Xin. You know, that was 20 years ago when I was in my later 20s. And I was thinking like, how can I go and improve my game of life. And most of the things are accidents. If you go to my LinkedIn, like I promised you, if you connect with me on my LinkedIn, I will respond, right? I didn't forget. It's only been one day. So definitely make sure you reach out no matter what it is, you've got to build community. And that was the message yesterday. Well, the same thing applies today. Well, in an, in an age of AI, I'm going to read you as a father, what I realized one day this was two years ago, that I better start taking AI very seriously. And so I applied to Harvard. And this is right here. This is my essay of what happened and what I wrote. So I'm going to read it to you so that you can get the juices of how I became um, knowledgeable about AI. First, I had to be accepted. And help, but then the first, before everything, I had to apply. And no longer am I in my 20s. I'm now almost in my 50s, and so might not look like it, right? But I'm almost in my 50s, and here I go. The first paragraph says, as an inventor and investor, I have taken many journeys accompanied by loving mentors, starting with my father, who taught us to be self-learners. Meanwhile, my ac academic mentors always encouraged me to be thorough, my business mentors taught me the value of early investing, of being proactive. My media publicists taught me how to know my audience, my target audiences. My combining these experiences, by doing that, by combining them, I was able to wisely time my exits from multiple investments. In other words, I learned that proper data collection and interpretation are essential for positive outcomes. Now the paragraph ends with this last sentence. Then my story took a twist. I became a father and my children became my greatest teachers. All right. And so the next paragraph goes like this. Fatherhood took a hold of me deeper than I ever imagined. Like an immune response, the initial exposure of parenting changed me. Then the second exposure, right? From my next child, rearranged my priorities. In 2017, I sold my co-founder's stake in a material science company and became a high school teacher at a boarding school to learn how I could build a future home school. Consequently, my entire family was aligned on our new journey, education. And that home school would ultimately become dwaprep.com, Dr. Holsom's Academy, um, third paragraph, as a teacher and house parent at the boarding school, I helped one of my 10th grade students attract $1 million in funding for his business idea. This changed his life and validated my purpose in education. 
At the end of 2017, I shared my story inventing happiness on TEDx. By 2018, Dr. Holsom's Academy, which enabled learning through immersion and inspiration, was founded. My goal of creating a learning environment to influence my own children has blossomed into helping others. Taking this education-based goal to the next level goes hand in hand with business and data analytics. This part is really important. What if Leonardo da Vinci, Einstein, Michelangelo, Mozart, William Fong, Mother Teresa, right, Yong Zhou Yi, were not random events, but outcomes of careful mentorship and education. How about how many great success stories have we missed or even eliminated because an uninspired student decided to give up work instead of becoming Zhao Xingqi, number 2.0, they go on and do something else. Given the upcoming range and severity and urgency of problems across the globe, including climate change we talked about yesterday, we need a greater volume of compassionate leaders, scientists, inventors, anyone. If you want to grow a rose, right, and have it blossom in the winter, there are particular mechanisms that need to be understood and implemented, right? If you're going to grow it in the middle of winter and make it bloom, you have to know what's going on. So imagine a world where we detect weaknesses in order to enable greater resiliency. Imagine a society where our parents, our educators, and students are equal stakeholders on this journey. What if big data, when properly analyzed, could help maintain the course for these children and additionally provide protective measures to ensure their outcomes are not put at risk? Better detection, enhanced forecasting, and improved outcomes would become a reality for education. Our world has gone digital. Artificial intelligence is here. Data is the new oil, and understanding how to use that data is the new oil refinery. Implementing these tools to fuel education is our road to a better future. I believe that at Harvard, the, beta, the business analytics program would be an asset in my mission to create improved education outcomes for all socioeconomic classes, communities, regions, and countries. So that was the essay where I didn't mention a lot of things. I was very focused on being re-educated by my children, and I didn't want them to think of anything that I might have going for me. I put it all in a very short paragraph. And the rest of it was how much it could help. And after I got accepted, my life changed. It changed once again, because I realized why I must tell everyone today, tonight, from the United States of America, broadcasted into Hong Kong, I am time traveling. And every Wednesday I do this, by the way with Chan Wai Yi and Missing Peace Dawn Online. And I did it before with Zhang Dan Sir, right? Doing health during the middle of COVID. And we did 27 episodes of this. And what I did there was I took information that people would want to know about their health. And I answered questions for about an hour to two hours. And I started during the year of COVID and I would time travel, not very good at time traveling, just about 12 hours difference. And right now, through these lenses, I have traveled to the future and I'm able to talk with you. And with a good microphone, I can be really close. With a great camera, it's almost like I am next to you, that I'm right there. And I want to share with you the power of AI is that with data sets, we will know better than tarot cards. We will know what exactly would make us successful. You see the greatest fear for people who want to be successful is maybe they're not successful. That's number one. Another possibility is that you're successful, but then um, you're not successful for very long. 
So that's another big fear. So looking at success as a goal, but also fear, right? You know, it, it gets a very interesting set of data. But only someone who now looks at data very carefully could appreciate that. And what about success, but selling your soul? Oh, that's scary, right? Success of, you know, and then, and then, and then success of letting go your ego, right? Yesterday, I, I put on this, um, this thing. I don't know if I, it'll work today. It'll get me into the mood of this, right? Okay. Yeah, this is better, right? This is definitely better. Because, you know, you can, you know, in the AI world, we're all in the metaverse, right? We can just be somebody else. And you just keep on going, right? You keep on going. And the truth of the matter is, do whatever you like. Really? You sure? With that data set, some parents get really upset when they see their children and they said, why are you doing this? And the answer, I'm doing exactly what you asked me to do. I'm doing, you told me to be happy. So I'm happy doing nothing. So make sure you understand what data set you want. Success with what? Is it success after giving up your soul? Or is it actually success, but you have no friends left? Or is it success, but you can't go back in time to enjoy that success because you spent your whole life chasing, All right? They say that success is getting what you want, but happiness is wanting what you get and what you got. Very interesting play on words. And that I have to tell you that in the age of AI, with better data sets, especially when we understand ourselves, we could go further. I used to be lucky accidentally, and I was able to convince a girl, my wife, to marry a deaf and dumb person. I am deaf and dumb. Stealing a little bit from Aaron Pang's interview, episode 26, 25, I talk about being deaf and dumb because I cannot read or write Chinese. Cannot, but I can speak on the wa. And every day I get a little bit better in Cantonese because she chose to love me, right? So you can change. And so if you know that that's the girl who's chosen you and there's a chance for me to escape from America, right? Or time travel, you do it. And you don't ask any questions, you just dive right in, right? And so if you know that there's an age of AI that can change the outcome, I share about so many different examples of how AI gives us precision without getting tired. It can just keep going. It's very, very powerful. But what's most important is if you have the philosophy, AI will not give you the philosophy. And AI will be written by human beings, right? The program's written by them. And I'm looking at the clock because we only have two minutes left, even though we're fast forwarding the future. Reach out. Don't let your fear of AI or that it might be something negative. No, it's, there is no negative AI. That's a possibility. The reality is if we all become part of something, we all have a voice. Just like yesterday I said, vote with your dollars. You can also vote with your time and your contributions. And if we all participate, we don't get into that Skynet world or that bad AI or the evil AI. We have a chance for great AI which then buys us time on this earth to be a little bit better, to have a chance of finding another planet, plan B, and to be a little bit better to ourselves and to not to take someone else's date because they're not quite so right. AI could give us better precision, but only if we write the code. AI could give us the better success story because there are certain people who want certain things. AI when used properly, can solve a lot of medical problems without it being invasive. When a dentist gets tired, and that happens every day, you look at an x-ray, hmm, I wonder if I need that filling. Yeah, yeah, get the filling. Yeah, if you're the last patient for the dentist, probably that's what's going to happen at a higher rate 
But the AI robot, kind of like a Pokemon, would prevent that from happening. The possibilities of AI are tremendous. Calculating that, that's like adding mathematics into everything. A little bit gross, mathematics with dancing, mathematics with singing, mathematics with dating. But the reality is AI has a great bright future if we all participate. And right now we have the chance of the coming of an age that in 10 years, everything will be have a thread of AI in it, machine learning and data sets and data is abundant everywhere, but understanding that data and what it means to us as a civilization is your chance and opportunity to change your future. So 100% dive right in and make sure you participate. And thank you for having me today. Thank you, Felicity Tafuchi. Love you so much. Always so sorry for me. Um, so uh, please and continue our program after the session. I will send in the chat. And we can see about metaverse. So the metaverse uh, is going to be starting at 11.15. And so we have just so much of the team. So if you have any news or any podcast, can, we can, we can send us to the chat. And also, uh, uh, we have a channel on the platform so we can contact you. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.